S-Log. It maximizes dynamic range and gives you a better overall image. But the problem is that most of us who have Sony cameras that are under $2,000, they only shoot in 8-bit, which means that the S-Log is very, very challenging to grade and it's hard to bring your colors back. Or is it? <laughs> What's going on guys, my name is Zach Kincaid and today we are going over S-Log and how you can get S-Log to work for you in 8-bit Sony cameras. Over the past year, I've been able to find out what works for me and how I could use S-Log and still get a very good image that the colors are 100% present and they're pretty easy to grade. So let's go ahead and jump into Final Cut Pro and I'll show you what I mean. Now, everything I've shot was either in S-Log2 or S-Log3, but I did adhere to the principles of ETTR. If you don't know what ETTR means, it means exposing to the right or overexposing your image. And I will link a video in the description of Gerald Undone that you can go to and figure out everything you need to know about why you should expose to the right for the cleanest image. A lot of people, they shoot in S log and then they go ahead and they do their color correction and color grade at the same time and while you can get away with that that's how your colors fall apart so when you shoot in log you always want to bring it back to a rec 709 and the best way to do that is with a corrective LUT I'm going to be using the Leeming LUT Pro from Paul Leeming I will have a link in the description so you can purchase this yourself but basically this is the guideline that I'm adhering to in the most basic way I can explain it we are changing our color mode on just S log 2 to S gamut 3 dot cine. And the reason we're doing that is because his color correction in his corrective LUT requires that to get accurate colors. And when it comes to our zebras, we are setting the maximum to whatever number he recommends to ETTR to. We're exposing our image all the way up until we see zebras and then dialing it back one until those zebras are gone. Now that was a lot of information, so feel free to rewind, but I think I did a decent job of explaining it. Now I'll also give another caveat. S-Log2 is really, really useful for maximizing your dynamic range, but it is not necessary in a lot of scenarios. You'll see a lot of YouTubers, they'll have their log profile and then they'll bring in their color correction and it makes you think that you should shoot in a log profile at all times. But for a situation like this, I'm actually shooting in Cine 2, which does give me a little bit of a flatter tone curve, but it doesn't give me as much dynamic range. And that's because you don't need it. There is not enough dynamic range in the room for the camera to even capture it. I personally shoot in S-Log2 probably 80% of the client projects I do, but in situations like this where you don't have a lot of dynamic range going on or specifically in low light, S-Log can work, but it can sometimes hinder as well. So you just really need to gauge your situation and determine what is best for you. So in this first clip, this is just your basic S-Log2 according to the Leeming LUT. So the only change done on this is the detail is brought down and we've changed it to S gamma 3 dot cine. And as you see, when we put the corrective LUT on, it actually, this looks great. This is a great looking image, but it could be a little bit more saturated. So let's just give it a little bit more saturation. There we go. We can see the sun kind of hitting her, but yeah, midtones are a little bit strong. There we go. That's a pretty good image right there. But let's go ahead and zoom in now. And we can see, yeah, see there's a little bit of color fringing going on in certain areas where the camera isn't capturing enough data. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more and we can look around just like her hair. You see all of this like weird color splotching in the neck, we got color splotching. Now, when you look at the full image, you can't really see it. It's not really apparent, but whenever you start adding your color grade to it, that's when your image is really gonna break down. This is only color correction. And the fact that we're already starting to have these breakdowns because there wasn't enough color information, I'm gonna show you what I like to do in order to get a little bit more color information. So this next clip is the same S-Log2 S gamma 3 dot cine, but I'm actually gonna move the saturation up to plus 17. And this gave me more saturation in camera. In fact, this I would argue is too much saturation, which yes, it requires you to go in and change it a little bit, but if we actually, let's try to balance it. There we go, that looks decent to that one. Now, if we go in and zoom in, a lot of that color splotchiness is gone. 
You may still have a little bit here and there, specifically in these shadows, but a lot of it disappeared and all we had to do was just bring up that color. So that is just plus 17, but we're gonna take it a little bit farther just to see what we can do. This one right here is plus 24. As you can see, it's very, very oversaturated. If you like that look, cool, not for me. Bring down just the overall saturation. Go in and zoom in and see how our color fringing looks. Nice, even less color fringing. Now let's do plus 32. This is all the way, let me zoom out. And yeah, very, very, very oversaturated. But the good news is we can always pull saturation out. The problem with 8-bit is it's hard to bring the saturation back into it. But if it's already there beforehand, it's a lot easier to work with. Bring down the overall saturation, that was a little bit too far. Let's go ahead and zoom in and we still have a bit of color splotching. So we actually kind of saw about the same amount of color noise in this image from plus 17 to plus 32. It might've cleaned up a little bit from plus 17 to plus 24, but plus 24 to plus 32, I personally did not notice much of a difference. So taking your saturation to plus 17 is my recommendation at the moment because it's gonna give you all that color information you need, but you're not gonna have to pull as much back. I feel like the plus 24, plus 32, as far as the leaming let goes, is just honestly a little bit overkill. And I think this does the job. So this is S-Log3 exposed properly, but S-Log3 is known for having very, very little color information. So a lot of people, even if they are gonna push their colors, they avoid S-Log3 on 8-bit. But we actually went in and hit plus 32 on the colors. And so let's see when we add in the leaming LUT for S-Log3, we can see that we have plenty plenty of color data to work with. So let's go ahead and bring down the saturation. And there you go, there is a usable image in S-Log3. Now, one thing you need to be aware of is that S-Log3 does work best with 10-bit. So even though our colors look fine, when we start to zoom in, we get a bunch of weird artifacts and banding in the sky. You can kind of see it like right here. The transition between the colors are so fine that the camera, even at maximum saturation, even though it's capturing all the color depth it can, it's not recognizing what colors those are supposed to be just because there is not enough data in the image, no matter how much saturation you put it in. If your goal is to maximize your dynamic range, S-Log3 is doable. It's really depending on what you're gonna do because if you're gonna go in and color grade this afterwards, you could start running into some big issues. But if you're trying to maximize dynamic range, you're just gonna put it out at Rec. 709, you can do it with this leaming LUT and plus 32 on S-Log3. So next we're gonna go back into S-Log2, but we're gonna use the color space ITU709 matrix. This is from Caleb Pike of DSLR Video Shooter. And although it does give you more color in camera, I don't like it and I'll show you why. So just for fun, let's add the leaming LUT on. Maybe a little oversaturated. Let's bring down the saturation just a bit. Look at that. That is a very, very pleasing image. The problem is it's not color accurate. Let's go ahead and bring the plus 17 over. If you look at the water here, we got more of a purple blue sky going on, purple blue water. But when you go in here, oh, you get a teal shift, which is very pleasing. You get a teal and orange look. But keep in mind, this is what I was talking about, whereas this is supposed to be your color correction, not your color grade. If you look at the blues over here, they're pushing towards cyan really, really hard versus on the regular S Gamma 3 Cine, they're going more in the middle. Do you see that difference? It's very minor until you put the corrective LUT on. And then you can see that the corrective LUT is pushing the blues towards blue where it's supposed to be. Whereas this one, it, it can't push it. It's still leaving a little bit too much cyan in the image. And also we're getting a boost to like the red magentas as well. So if you're looking to just capture something and have a great image, you can use the leaming LUT on top of ITU 709, zero saturation, and you get a good flattering image, but the problem is it's not correct. So if you're trying to do a teal and orange, there it is. But if you're trying to do anything else, I'd recommend not doing it. Now, what if you don't want to use the leaming LUT? Well, then you can just kind of grade it and correct it yourself. But even after I've done that, we still are getting a lot of teal in the water, which is very pleasing to the eye, but not correct. This one right here, I'm not even going to bother you with. This is ITU 709 at plus 32. And it, no, just, just, just don't. Again, I recommend 
slog 2 scamma 3 dot cine with plus 17 saturation because these are way more accurate colors than this. If you want this teal and orange look, that is where a color grade comes in. This is Rec 709 and we can easily add a teal and orange color grade. And now the images are very similar. But the whole point of this is you had the choice on what you wanted the image grade to look like. Let's say if we don't want a teal and orange, let's throw on Ryan Nangle teal and pink. Now we got a little bit more teal and pink in it. Let's go into Peter McKinnon. We'll go to the Kodak Killer. Bam. See what I'm saying? Whereas if we do it on these, we already have such like a grade to it. You can add it, but you start, look in the, in the water right here. You're starting to get a breakdown, You're getting a little bit of a green breakdown there. The colors aren't accurate. So your LUT doesn't know exactly what to do with it. This is what the LUT is supposed to look like. This is what it looks like when you have the ITU 709. This is why you want to correct your S-Log footage to Rec 709 because it gives you more options in post. Now that was a lot, it is really in depth, so feel free to rewind if anything didn't make sense to you. But if you put these tactics in place, you can get really, really stunning images out of S-Log, specifically S-Log 2 on 8-bit cameras. It's not something you need to be scared of. You just need to know how to use it and how to maximize your usage with these 8-bit cameras. Anyways, that's going to be it for this one. If you've enjoyed it, I would really appreciate if you leave it a like because it did take a lot of testing and work. Subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of my future videos and leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.